All right, we're gonna be covering logging with OBD Fusion and VPeak. I have this one, this is just an OBD2 scanner connecting tool, uh, little dongle thing on the jing that I got off of. Amazon, I have a link below for it. It's pretty cheap, I think it's like 30 bucks or so. But we're gonna cover logging with OBD Fusion. In my example, I have a Fiat 124 Spider Barth. We're gonna cover logging with my car and Euro Compulsion Tuning, which is who I'm tuned with. They offer custom tunes, and when you do custom tuning with them, you're gonna have to use OBD Fusion and provide some data logs like this. But regardless, even if you're not tuned with your compulsion, you don't have a 124 spider, you should still get some value out of this because I'm gonna show you guys how to log, how to set the parameters. Uh, Android and iPhone are a little bit different when it comes to connecting some of these. I'll cover that a little bit. And most importantly, how to access your data logs. I know some folks try and look at their phone when the app is live and like either take screenshots or record it, screen record it, but don't do that. It is completely delayed. Don't even worry about that. Just make sure it's connected, do your logs, run, etc. Then afterwards, you go into the app. I'll show you guys where to go to get your logs. They're in a CSV file. You can even quickly look at them in the app. More importantly, we're gonna send them to the computer. We're going to clean them up a bit if you wanna just get particular runs. If you're doing like a log that might be the whole drive, how you can consolidate particular runs. And the best part about it, shout out to Brandon and Yerko Portion for telling me about this. There's a free app that we can upload this CSV file to, and it's gonna lay it out in this beautiful, easy to read graph where you can turn on and off different parameters and everything. That's the cherry on top here. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you do, give it a like, subscribe if you wanna see more, comment below, let me know your that's my dog barking over there. Well, you know, comment below, let me know what you guys think. And um, let's dive in. I'll probably screen record my own phone as I'm talking and literally show you and we'll go from there. So real quick, before we hop into the phone app, I just wanna talk about connecting this device. So with an iPhone, you do not connect via Bluetooth. There's a, actually, they put it right here. With iOS, you install the app. In this example, we're gonna be using OBD Fusion, not any free app like this. The app OBD Fusion, I think it's like $9.99, but I highly recommend it. I've used it, other folks use it. it does a really good job of data logging. Plug in the device, turn on the ignition, do not connect via Bluetooth. That's what it's telling you right there. You're just gonna start the app and there's like a connect button there and that's it. It's gonna connect just via the app once it's plugged in. I'll show you that when I screen record my iPhone inside of the app. When it comes to Android, I think it's, yeah, it's right here on the back that you're gonna actually connect through Bluetooth. So pair your number with VPeak using pin one, two, three, four in the Bluetooth settings. This is gonna be right there. This is a user manual, which I honestly did not look at yet. So no worries about that. It's pretty simple. I don't think you need to look at that, but by all means, read it if you want to. So let's hop into the app and go over what needs to be done. I'm not gonna actually be in the car connecting this. I'm gonna talk about more what to do and how it works. So let's go from there. All right, so I'm screen recording my phone and I'm gonna show you guys how to do this, okay? So on the bottom towards the right, you know, the last app, you're gonna see OBD Fusion. I'm gonna click that real quick. It's gonna open. Now you see on the bottom, there's a connect button. Like I said before, with an iPhone, you don't need to do anything with Bluetooth. You literally just plug the device into your OBD2 port, you turn on the ignition and you press connect. If I press it right now, it's obviously not gonna connect because there's nothing there. I'm not plugged in right now. We're gonna do that. Now, there are a couple settings that you wanna make sure you have when it's logging. I'll tell you what I use as far as when it starts to log, and then I'll touch base on the PIDs. Uh, yeah, connection failure, obviously I'm not connected. It was still trying, I think. I'll tell you what I connect for uh, with Euro Compulsion for tuning, for data logging, I should say. And there might be some that I have not checked off and some that you guys might wanna check off. You know, talk to your tuner, obviously, and see what you should be logging. So we're gonna click settings up here on the top left, and then we're gonna go to preferences, and then we're gonna go to logging, and then we're gonna go to logging trigger. All right, that might've been a little quick, but just you know, keep that in mind. I have this on trigger on PID frame. Basically what that means is anytime one of those PIDs is um, being triggered, it's going to start logging. So for me, right when I turn the car on, and connect it, it's gonna start logging. That's why later in the video, I'm gonna show you guys how to take that CSV file and really like consolidate and grab out different sections to make it easier for you. But I prefer to have it on trigger on PID frame. It's gonna log your whole entire run basically. So now we're gonna go one back, which brings us back to logging, and then it's gonna say select PIDs in the middle there. We're gonna hit that. 
Now there's a little trick that I accidentally found out, but when I did, it saves so much time. If you are not connected to your car, like I am right now, I'm not connected, and I go to, let's say the SAE PIDs, you're gonna have so many, I'm talking like probably hundreds here, which is crazy. And a lot of people don't know this, but if you have this connected to your car, the app will remove everything that is not functional with your car that like you just cannot track. And this will get shrunken down to very little, which is amazing. So that's a little trick. Not too many people know about that, but 100% when you're doing this, make sure you're plugged in. I know when I first downloaded this app, it was like late at night and I was just kind of looking through scrolling and I'm like, wow, this is a lot. But then when I connected it to my car and went here, there was barely any there, but that's perfect because then I did not have to waste time going through everything. Now, as far as what PIDs to track, for me, in my 124 Spider, when I'm data logging with your compulsion, and if they want to comment below a little more in depth, they can, or of course, like I said, speak to your tuner, they'll tell you what to log. Again, most importantly, have it plugged and connected to your vehicle. It's gonna save you a ton of time. So real quick, I'll actually just scroll through. So for the SAE, I think that was what, 13, yeah. So I got calculated load value, engine coolant temperature, intake manifold absolute pressure, engine RPM, vehicle speed, ignition timing event for number one cylinder, intake air temperature, um, let's see, absolute throttle position. I'm going through this pretty quick. You can pause if you want to take note of this. O2 sensor current wide range, catalyst temperature, absolute load value, relative throttle position, ambient air temperature. And that's it. Now for calculated PIDs, I got boost, acceleration, AF, which is your air fuel, air fuel commanded, air fuel ratio actual, and then lastly, GPS, I have altitude and GPS speed. Those are the PIDs that I have when I was doing my data logging. Let's go back, back, back. Let's go back to home is basically what I'm doing here. All right, back home. So when you're connected, let's say you plug it in, you press connect, you have all those parameters set up, you checked off what you want, and you have the trigger on PID frame the way I showed you earlier, it's going to start logging right away. So let's say you go for a drive, okay? It's what I did the other day, I think it was a few weeks ago when I did my first log, went for a drive, and when you're done, you're gonna disconnect it, it's gonna save the entire log, the entire drive. So on the bottom right, you're gonna hit logs. By default, you might be right here, which if you look on the bottom, there's going to be a row that says graphs, trips, files, messages. You're on graphs by default. You want to click files. These were the two that I did the other day. As you can tell, 41 minutes. I went on a 41 minute drive just to find an area that I could do some pulls. So my spreadsheet, my CSV file, my log is 41 minutes long containing stuff that I don't need to data log, but I'm going to show you how to take out basically and just save certain runs to make, keep it organized. With that being said, you're going to have all your logs right here, dated, timed. We're going to click it. I'll click the 41 minute one. It's going to give you more information. You can share, open in maps, open CSV file. Real quick, if you want to preview it, take a look at something, you can press open in CSV file and you actually have the CSV file here. Not that I recommend it, but if you're in the road and you want to take a peek real quick, you can do that. What I suggest though, is to click share. And then at that point, you can, you know, I have an iMac, iPhone, so I just airdrop it to my computer. You can email it to yourself, whatever you wanna do. Basically, you're gonna send that CSV file to your computer, and that's where you're really gonna dive into things and be able to look at everything more clearly. And then I'll show you how to, like I said, take out the runs or save them separate, I should say, and then upload it to that app that I was referring to. So let's actually hop onto the computer and I'll show you from there. All right, so I just airdropped the CSV file from that log. This is it opened up in, you know, for me with the Mac, I got numbers, you know, what other computers you might just have Excel, whatever, it doesn't matter. Once you export it, you wanna save it, export as a CSV file. This is actually the 13 minute one. I think I might've set up doing the 41 minute one or whatever it was, 40 something. That was actually the one where I just connected it and I was learning and I left it on as I was going through the app. The 13 minute one was the one that I went for a drive and did a third to fourth gear pull and I think a second gear pull a little bit later during that 13 minute drive. This is what it looks like right when you open the CSV file. It has all the information here, all the parameters that you had checked off. If you wanna keep it just in here, in a little bit I'm gonna show you the app. If you wanna keep it just in here, 
you could organize it you know you could highlight in an entire row you can take the cell and you can fill it with a certain color you can move stuff around let's say you want to move something like over here your engine rpm you don't want it all the way to the right you can click it and click hold and then drag it over here so the point is you can do a lot of different things and just keep it in the csv file basically and look at things here so you can keep it in here or we can use this app that i'm about to pull up on screen right now brandon over at your compulsion told me about this this is what they use in-house i believe for custom tuning it's obd fusion and this app right here called data zap this is a free web-based app you just go to the website i think it's what is it datazap.me is what it is but you can just google it data zap log up you know create your username etc password completely free and once you upload a log to here you can do some pretty cool stuff so let's go to my third to fourth gear pull for example we're going to look in here so by default right now i have my boost and what is the other one i think engine rpm is what's checked off now mind you Anytime you're logging boost through the OBD2 port on a 124 Spider, some of the cars are like this. I want to say, I believe some Volkswagens like GTIs and stuff are like this too, but it peaks out at around 22 to 23. And I can now see it's actually 22.48 in my example. I also like to record with my GoPro as I'm driving and then I could reference boost as well and then kind of customize it if I really feel like it. But the other parameters are what's important too. You have all these other ones. You want to do your engine RPM. Oh, that was already on. What am I saying? Air to fuel actual. Let's turn that on. You just click it right down here. And now we see as I'm going full throttle here, I'm like in the 11s. This was third gear. And then this is fourth gear. Again, 11.8, 11.5. Everything's good. You have your throttle position, engine coolant. There are so many. I'm not going to go over any everything. The point is, check this out. Like you can literally just upload that CSV file and then just start clicking things. See your speed, see this, see that. Turn stuff off and on. Look at the ambient air temperature. Uh, you know, your intake air temperature, relative throttle position, all different things. So it's a really neat free tool to use. I'm gonna show you what I did to upload just this third to fourth gear pull into DataZap, even though my particular CSV file had 13 minutes of driving. So what I do is I know in this particular drive, my third to fourth gear pull was the first time I went hard on throttle. So let's say we go to, let's go to boost, for example. Did I already pass it? Where's boost, boost, boost? I uh, probably passed it. I'll try in the front. Okay. So a little tedious, but you know, just go down. Another thing you could do is probably look at your, what is it? Relative calculated load value. Calculator load value. I think that's the one that turns to 100 when you're full throttle. So I can just kind of keep scrolling down until I'm seeing about 100. And then I know that's when I was doing that run. So right here, 196, 198. Now this, I forget the time because the way it tracks, it's like in a time parameter function in the sense that like it'll kind of trigger and capture data points every x amount of time i forget i think you could actually set that um, if anyone knows in the comments you can go further in depth on that what i notice is it's like i said it's time relevant so let's just say it does it every x amount of milliseconds or whatever it is if you're doing a pull in second gear you're not going to collect as much data as if, if you're doing it in third or even better if you're doing it in fourth because obviously the car takes longer to go through bottom to top of fourth gear than second gear and if it's being triggered by a time and that time doesn't change every x amount of milliseconds it's going to collect more data in that slower run of fourth gear than second gear so i suggest to do this in fourth gear when i first did it i did a third gear into fourth gear pull but it was more or less bottom of third to top of third so what I like to do is, let's say we want to just section out this third gear pull, that third to fourth, basically, which is what I just showed you. We're going to look right here is where it starts 100%. And we see boost 22. So I'm going to vacuum here. Let's say we're going to start here. Okay. So I'm going to take this row. We're going to go all the way up. We're going to hold on, at least with me, I'm on a Mac, hold shift and click. It's going to highlight everything in between. We're gonna right click anywhere in this blue section on the you know columns over here and press delete selected rows. You do that, now we're starting right where we want to. 
After this, I'm gonna go look when that run ended. So we can, again, we could look at calculated load value and boost, you know, those are the easy ones because you can see 100, 100, uh, 98, 15, so that's probably where I shifted, right there, and then 98, 100, 98, and then I load off the throttle over here. So maybe we go a little bit below, down to here. You could put even more, to be honest. I probably should have left a little more. You know, maybe a couple rows above before it starts and a couple rows after. You don't have to get too, too tight. Anyway, let's say we want to delete from here on. So we click there, scroll all the way down, hold shift, click here, right click this blue, column looking thing with the numbers and then delete those selected rows and now we just kind of took out that one run that third to fourth gear run at this point we're going to save this so for me we're going to go to file export to not pdf we're going to go to csv there's a bunch of different options you can't see it's on the side of the screen so let's just go to next i'm going to save this real quick as a sample one Test log third to fourth. Let's save it to my downloads real quick. So I just saved this CSV. Let's go into Data Zap. Let's say you're just on um, your, I don't know, you're on your logs over here. You know, when you're logged in, this is basically like a dashboard. We're going to click upload log, upload CSV first one we're going to go to browse and find the file that we just did so i'm going to do that real quick all right so that's the test log third to fourth i just named that real quick data log title again for my real one i'm just looking over to the side i like to put the the what do you call the date and the gears that i'm doing the pull in like this is just something that i did no one actually said this is the right thing to do i'm just, i just try to stay organized i think it'll help both me and the tuners who are looking into this so for example let's say today's date is what is it it's may 13th let's just pretend we did this today we do that we could do third to fourth gear fueling i'm on 93 youtube url that is also really cool. So I'm gonna show you, I'm actually gonna grab it myself real quick. So give me one second, I'm gonna go to my own account. I have a third to fourth gear pull that I just put as an unlisted video on YouTube so I can upload it here. You do, I suggest you guys do that too. If you record it like me, I like to have my GoPro and I kind of record facing forward. So why not? This also allows me to see my boost gauge so I can see my true boost considering OBD2 limits it. At this point, you got data log notes. So I'm gonna take a peek and see what I did with my original one. Yeah, all I did there was I put phase two. You know, I was already talking with your compulsion so they know my car and everything, but if you wanna go more in depth, this is where you can kind of talk about maybe your mods or this or that or whatever you wanna do. Go put whatever notes you wanna put here. You have the option to make it public or not. Since I'm sharing it with your compulsion, mine was public. At this point, we're gonna hit save and it's that easy. Boom, by default, boost and engine RPM are already defaulted and they're on. Let's just uh, start playing around a little bit. We have boost, we have that, we could do air to fuel ratio. Um, what else do we have here? Ignition, advanced timing, you know, everything's good here. We're seeing like two or so. This is not my specialty, but I believe from the little bit of research I did that you don't wanna go negative when it comes to timing over here. So, yeah, like I said, I'm not a tuner, so I'm not gonna know a lot of these specific parameters. I'm just kinda here to show you how to use this. I hope you guys understand and see some value in this. Now, let me show you the original. Actually, no, I'm gonna show you right here. If I scroll down, boom, check it out. The video is right here for you and your tuner to reference. Now, remember I told you this is not, this is like extremely delayed. So let me actually play this video real quick. So let me, um, let's see, 26 pounds of boost, it says I'm eight. Now it says 22, just shifted and watch how long it takes to go to negative. Off throttle, now it goes vacuum. It's a few seconds delayed. 
so don't worry about what this says directly on screen and this is something else actually that i didn't i forgot to touch base on when i was in the app but you can customize like the look and feel and put different parameters right here on the phone app it's pretty simple it's just like um similar to like an iphone or probably most smartphone screens where you click and drag you can just set whatever you want visible right here fortunately it's delayed so you really don't want to use this to look at things right away why is it delayed i don't know if you guys know leave a comment i don't know if it's just the way the app functions and works or if it's the obd2 scanner that i have maybe a wired one might be quicker i don't know if it's delayed going from the obd2 scanner down here to the phone if that's where the delay is then maybe having a direct connection is quicker I don't know you guys you know more let me know i might test that out i have a funny feeling that's what it is because obviously it's picking up the data on time it's appearing on my phone delayed so i think this covers everything to be honest that i wanted to share about how to log how to connect how to look at the csv file if you wanted to keep it in csv by all means you can do that and color code it and you know all that stuff but why not use data zap the thing's free you have all these cool parameters that you can visually just put on screen by clicking on and off it's just it's so simple you know what i mean so yeah i think that's it you know if you guys enjoyed it give it a like let me know what you guys think if you guys are going to be using obd fusion if you guys use any other apps that you recommend because you can use other apps and put it into data's app you can use other apps with the same obd scanner you don't have to use obd fusion but I like using OBD Fusion, and in particular, my tuner, Euro Compulsion, also uses them. This is how you do custom tuning with them, DataZap and OBD Fusion. But you can use whatever you want. I just like using these particular setups here. DataZap, like I said, it's freaking awesome. It's free. I'll have a link below if you want to check it out. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Subscribe for more. And since I have a computer in front of me, DrivenDistrict.com. We got some cool merch over here. Smoke tires, not drugs. Enjoy boost. Your boyfriend's car runs on 87. All different stuff. If you want to support the channel, it's a great way to do it. We got men's stuff, women's stuff, mugs, and a lot more stuff coming. So with that said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one.